Canada. Do say his name to us. Thank you very much, Dr. Kumar, for your very kind and elaborate introduction. And also, I must thank my old colleague from Delhi University, a good friend and the Vice Chancellor of this university, Professor Parsi Kuhat, and Dr. Rajiv Menon and his colleagues in the department for uh, having me to come again here to this department and this university, which I'm very glad to be associated with for the last three years or so. And I'm very glad to give this talk in the presence of my colleague, friend, and collaborator, Dr. Ashok Choli. Uh, maybe this aspect of our work, uh, he is not very familiar. Uh, so I would like to uh, do this in his presence and sort of just to uh, tell him this part of the work which was a hallmark of uh, the chemistry department of the University of Delhi ever since 1950. And the natural product chemistry research was the main focus of the department of chemistry activities uh, for about 70 years. As this slide shows, my two affiliations, mainly at the University of Delhi for the last 55 years or so, first as a student and then as a faculty, and also at the University of Massachusetts Lowell near Boston, where I met Dr. Shokchuli in the year 1996 for the first time. I spent close to 40, four years at the University of Delhi and in between six years at UMass Lowell. This slide also shows my affiliation, which will start from this coming Monday, 28th of January 2019, at Mendel Evers College, located in Brooklyn, New York, USA, which is part of the City University of New York, which is acclaimed as the biggest urban university network in the whole world. Anyway, I'm very happy to be here and tell you, particularly by uh, young audience, the students here, because I'm a faculty here, so I'm very glad to uh, tell you some of the stories and try to tell you that how natural products chemistry, which has been a very strong point of chemical research areas in our country ever since 1900s, or early 1900s, be it in Delhi, in Chennai, or in Calcutta, in Sashma Chaturthi, or anywhere in India, this has been a very popular and productive area of research. And I'm very proud that I was trained in this area for my PhD and I carried out research in this area ever since then for the last 45 years or so. But this is today, it meets the challenges of green chemistry. And I will tell you how. I will give you some examples if the time permits, but just try to impress upon you that how uh, the green chemistry is so important today, particularly in drug discovery. I dedicate this talk fondly to the great man, Professor T.S. Shadri, who was my mentor uh, for my PhD, and also he was a teacher in our master course. A great human being, a great teacher, and really we fondly call him Guru. And he is the father of our department, we fondly call him, because the first PhD was granted under his supervision of the, not only of the Department of Chemistry in New Delhi, but of the University of Delhi per se, in the year 1951. This is University of Delhi. It's a very big system. It completes the number of 12,000 teachers, 400,000 students, nearly 25,000 supporting staff, 17 faculties, 87 departments, 13 centers, and 90 colleges. This is a Department of Chemistry Modern View. And I was lucky to be a student of this department later on faculty and ultimately head of the Department of Chemistry. And this tall building which you see behind was made by the uh, kind gesture of the then, then Vice Chancellor, Mr. Deepak Pinto, who had love for chemistry. He gave a lot of money to the chemistry department to make not only new buildings but also a lot of equipment. We have been active in different areas of uh, scientific research. As I said in the beginning, we started with the <coughs> field of uh, natural products, which we continue to do today, and made a lot of photochemical compounds. Then, went into biocatalysis, 
And this is the area which me and Dr. Chaudhary have shared over the years and got some success. I don't have time to get into all of that. Maybe he will show a few slides on this. And then we moved into the area of uh, nuclear sites and radio nuclear sites and finally advanced materials. This is the area which I learned and also worked at UMass Law for five or six years. And we have quite a big success in this area. Anyway, we'll talk to you today on green chemistry and how natural water research is useful in making the ends of green chemistry challenges. This just shows you that the, the, the need of doing collaborations. We have been lucky, as I said in the introduction, also to establish collaborations in 14 countries with 30, 26 research groups. And uh, we were funded very well by both Indian agencies and outside in the US, in Europe, Denmark, Germany. Well, before I proceed, let us see this uh, circle and see here that uh, the world today, this is the mortality, it is the infectious diseases which are quite take a big chunk of them. Of and we follow the cardiovascular, they don't get infected. Greater infectious diseases, cancer, and other injury to other diseases are. Hypertension and uh, uh, heart related diseases. This is what I want to share with you. Please read with me this uh, the second pillar, which is in. Oh, what did I do? The second pillar here, this is very heartening for us to note. It says $350 billion is global production of APIs. By the way, API is active pharmaceutical ingredient, which is the, in the compound responsible for treating any disease. You may take a pill, injection, or suspension of a formulation. Uh, but there is one compound which is the active, real active drug molecule which exerts the drug or medicinal value. And that is called API. And the total API business is about $350 global business, I believe so. And India's share is quite substantial, about 10%, uh, amounting to $35 billion. And this accounts for 3% of our GDP, which is quite high. So we must keep this value uh, and this, this, this uh, particular advantage which we have, because synthetic chemistry in India has been quite strong. And uh, there is obvious from the share of the API manufacture that we have in the India, in the scenario. But what is disturbing is what is written here. For one kg of API made, more than 100 kilograms of waste is generated. And out of which 80% is due to organic solvents alone. It's estimated that 15 billion kilograms of organic solvents are used annually. And this is a challenge to my young friends in the audience, in the students. And this is a challenge to you, and you can make great opportunity from here, as Dr. Tony will also tell in his uh, talk. Green technologies, smart products, smart materials, this is the, the way to go today. And how to go, you should learn the basics of this and also the importance of this and how we can do this. So this is, this, this, this is not accepted. This has to be changed. No more organic solvents. Preferably do reactions in water or solid less reaction, solid phase, if you can do it. Drug development. I will have no time in this, but I again want to emphasize what is written here. Drug development is the final step which involves the rendering of lead compounds suitable for use in clinical trials. What is involved in drug discovery and drug development? Just read this. It takes about 10 years of time, about the work of 500 scientists of different disciplines, and an investment of $1.2 billion to draw the drug. And as well as chemistry is related, read this. It involves a synthesis of 6,000 individual compounds on average to find a lead which can uh, or cannot be a drug. Uh, to lead the hit or lead molecule, so at least 36,000 chemical reactions are involved. Isn't it alarming? You might have done one chemical reaction in a lab, right? You know what it takes. If you have a maybe lab course in which in uh, one day or, or two days in the week you go and spend three hours in the lab, you do one reaction. 
slides go fast, I can come again and spend some more time to discuss each slide in more details. So today I'm rushing through because of time. But just to give you an essence that where we are and what how you can contribute in this multidisciplinary scientific uh, field. Please leave this uh, five lines in view. Contribution of plants in our therapeutic stock is in undeniable. Since 65% of the present drugs have their origin in plants, whether by extraction or by chemical reproduction, the study of therapeutic potentialities of known or traditional plant species must be intensified to find new chemical entities in these. What is the most common drug which you have known or you, for instance, like people at your household would have used? I would say aspirin. Even aspirin is called chemically it is acetyl salicylic acid made by aspirin salicylic acid, which is naturally occurring a bond in salic solution. So the very first drug which was synthesized has its base from natural products. And 65% of the present known drugs have direct or indirectly the modification of natural products too. So if that is the case. Doesn't it occur to you that why should not we look at nature to find leaves as natural compounds, which may themselves be used as such for treating uh, diseases like Paxol, or they can be modified, or their analogs can be made and then tested. So leaves can be obtained instead of making 6,000 compounds carrying out 36,000 reactions and disturbing our eco balance or ecosystem, we go to nature. I do natural problem chemistry, you see. Right? Doesn't it make sense? I'm asking my young students. Does it make sense to do natural problem chemistry research or not? It does. And I will show you, for example, these are some uh, public, the, 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 the references where people from Harvard Medical School or from uh, leading natural problem chemistry research, they have just written good review articles to emphasize this point. Lessons from Natural Molecules is written by Professor Clary and Walsh from Harvard Medical School, published in Nature in 2004 and other references there. So there's a great need to intensify natural, and we are very lucky, our country, India, is uh, home to so many diverse flora and fauna all over the country, go to the Eastern part of the country, southern parts of the country, in the arid zones, wherever you go, you find medicinal plants. Not only plants, but even we are rich by coastal lime also. Marine sources are great again to get the natural products. So, and only as an estimated, only 5% of flora and fauna of India has been phytochemically examined. Means examined for their chemical constituents and hence for any medicinal properties. And we have immense documented information from different literature as well as our Vedas or later on in publications from where we can 
see which compound, which plant has been used over the years or for thousands of years for any treatment. And we can first take up the cardiogenesis examination of that plant or that part of the plant and find out a need for any reason. I will show you just briefly one that I don't have time really to go into this. This is Bible Longer. Dr. Menon is uh, from, uh, I believe, Kerala. And uh, Kerala, every household, even in the kitchen garden, there are a lot of spices growing. Uh, and Bible Longer is a very common spice on long pepper, or kitli. And uh, this is uh, documented knowledge in our Upanishads that Bible Longer is uh, good for bronchitis, for persistent cough. And we worked on this plant. This is the cultivated how Bible Longer looks like. And we found that the hexane and chloroform extract of Piper longer has anti-inflammatory activity. By measuring the levels of cell addition molecule expression, it is often seen that when you have bronchitis or persistent cough, the levels of CAM molecules, the cell addition molecules, the three of them, three types, which we get, I can, B CAM and these lactin, all these proteins, the small molecule weight proteins, their levels increase. And if you have any compound which is anti inflammatory, the levels of these CAM molecules go down and inflammation is uh, decreased and the cough uh, is, uh, uh, is less or it is decreased. The incidence and also the, uh, the severity of cough is decreased. And this is good in asthma, COPD, which are very important uh, diseases related to pollution, particularly in today's world, related to developing countries or developed countries, these problems are common. So we found that the chloroform extract of Viper Longa is good in lowering the IGN-1 expression. And this paper was first published in the journal Biochemistry of ACS, and later on the European Journal, uh, which is the equivalent of Biochemistry by Kini, more extensive studies. And we found this compound to be the active DC bundle Piper Longum, which was a reason for the anti-inflammatory activity of the chloroform extract of Piper Longum or for Piper Longum. And this table shows this, uh, that the, the real, the IK1 becomes the, the levels are decreased. We made 1,500 different compounds and found one compound which is a simple analog of natural product. This is natural product. We made about 1,500 compounds bearing this uh, ring substituents and the length of this uh, uh, carbon chain between the carbon group and the aromatic ring and the alcohol functionality. We found if we replace oxygen by sulfur, that becomes the most active compound. And this compound was just, just tested in collaboration with the team at John Hopkins Medical School. And we found that it really uh, shows wonderful activities. Then we made some more compounds, and this compound was the, this was the work of Shashwa Kambhakla, whom Dr. Jody knows because he worked with him in his lab. And this compound, again, an isoprazol, turned out to be a, again like a natural product, but the cinnamide also was a good activity. So this is now a need, and I have no time to discuss and go into detail. This project was later on funded by the Department of Scientific and Medicine Research to give us a lot of money. And this work was done in collaboration with the Institute of Genom Genomics and Integrated Biology, a CSI lab on the campus of University of Delhi. And really, this, this was patented in Indian patent and uh, really a very nice activity, better than the commercial and commercials. And this is the work which was done at John Hopkins Medical School, the real in vivo models of the, of the, of the mice. We found the NRF2 factor uh, increases, which is again uh, a factor involved in a protein involved in inflammation. And the, and the entire work was published after the patent in the International Immune Pharmacology Journal in the year 2013. I bring you here another work related to our very common plant, and this is related to hypertension or cardiovascular failure. If I show you this uh, slide, please see this. This is humanine molecule, a very simple uh, lipocytic uh, compound. These occur very abundantly in nature. 
almost every plant and every food which we consume, be it the nuts, cereals, fruits, vegetables, they contain cumulins, certain cumulins. And cumulins character is basic structure. The substitutes we have in this position, this position is called 